Howdy. Today I'm going to talk to you about a really powerful hydrology tool from USGS called StreamStats. Now, why would someone want to use StreamStats? It's a really quick way to either calculate a contributing drainage area to a point or to calculate peak discharges like a 100-year flood, 2-year flood, um, and in different different um, flood levels. You can see as I'm zooming in here, it's actually wanting me to pick which state or regional study area that I'm going to be going to. Now I'm going to keep zooming in a little bit farther. And now you can see it switches to Oregon and Washington. Now I want to look at a specific spot. Um, you can actually see there's a little triangle right here. What is that telling us? Now one of the other cool things that we can do with stream stats is we can actually pull stream gauge data. Now stream stats doesn't have every uh, stream gauge available out there, but it does have a lot of them from USGS. Uh, so it could be really helpful. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is click on Washington. I'm going to delineate. If I'm zoomed in far enough, I will see a lot of pixelated uh, streams um, in this area. Now, you can't do this for every single uh, part of your county. It doesn't really work for urbanized areas, and I'll show you why in a second. But essentially, this is using uh, topographic or DEM data uh, to be able to first generate a contributing drainage area, so how much water. Um, and what sort of area is draining to this specific spot. And then it uses that contributing drainage area, which we'll see in a second here. It basically uses that area boundary uh, and it pulls a lot of different data from uh, different GIS uh, type data sets uh, to be able to yeah, basically generate a 100 year flow rate for you. Here we go. So I created a boundary area. Now this works very well in areas without piping or without a lot of ditches. Um, however, you know, as we kind of head into a more urbanized area, it's not going to work very well. Now, if you know, for example, that there are um, some road ditches or some, some piping out there that's not represented from USGS, you can actually go in and individually edit your basin. Um, so that's a helpful way that if you want to be more accurate. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to keep cruising with this specific area. And I'm going to hit continue. There's basically three different pieces of uh, check boxes you can pull. I'm going to just check them all. Low flow, peak flow, and I'm also going to click this little button and select all basin characteristics. So I'm basically telling it to pull all the data available for this specific area. Okay, here we go. I'm going to click continue and it should populate all this in a nice handy report, which I can download in different methods. I can also download that area as a shapefile if I want to pull it into GIS. So let's look at the data that I actually uh, generated. So when I clicked on that basin characteristics, this is all the data that I was able to pull in. You can see I have precipitation, I have my drainage area, 3.5 miles, square miles. Um, I have the canopy percentage, it's almost 50%, it's pretty high. Elevation, um, a lot of different data that you can pull from here. Now a couple things you'll notice aren't in here. It doesn't have impervious cover. Um, it doesn't have a couple other pieces of information that might be helpful uh, for generating you know, 100 year flow rate. So how is it actually going to be calculating uh, some of these flow rates that we're looking at right here? 10 year, 25 year, 100 year. And then I also did the, the low flow as well, the seven day, 10 year low flow. So how is it actually calculating uh, this information? You might if you're not looking too closely, you might not notice, but it actually tells you two of the parameters just above each of these, drainage area and mean annual precipitation. That's What that's telling us is that, and if you dive more deeply into this report here, uh, which I can actually open up if I want, if you kind of read this report, you'll find out that where we are located, where this area is located, which let me pull up a little map cheat sheet here, in the state of Washington, and I guess part of Oregon, they've split it up into four different regions, and we're in region four. In region four, based on the regression equation, regression analysis that they figured out, they decided that they only really need two pieces of information to generate a 100 peak flow runoff for this entire area. Um, so if I have the same drainage area right here as I do right here or right here, say I have, you know, two point what do we have, 2.5 square miles? If we have that amount of area uh, and we figure out what the precipitation is, the mean annual precipitation for that area, we're gonna be able to generate 
what the 100-year peak is. Now, that sounds like a huge leap to me. It seems like you should have a lot more information uh, to be able to calculate that accurately, which is why uh, this is a, just a tool. It's one good check. And I said 2.5. It's actually 3.5 square miles. Um, so if that is the case, what sort of error levels are we looking at? Well, for the 100-year peak, we have 520 cubic feet uh, per second. But it's giving us a low range of 113 and a high range of 2,400. So that's a huge uh, range that it could be in between. So all this is to say, this is one tool to check. This might not be uh, the, the best way to do it. Um, what other things can we do? How could we, how alternatively could we check what the 100 year peak is? Well, the way these are actually calculated is by using stream gauge data. Now I know there's a stream gauge here. It'd be nice if there's a stream gauge here, um, but let's actually, I'm gonna reopen this up uh, so that I can actually get to that stream gauge information. I'm going to click on the stream gauge, and it's going to give me two links here. One piece of the data is actually just going to give me straight up the 100-year peak flood. It's doing the calcs for you, and it's using log Pearson type 3 regression analysis, which I'm hoping to make another video on that, which is a really uh, good thing to understand how that actually works. Um, but it's also telling us a couple other pieces of information. So it's giving us 2.1 square miles. Um, and it's also going to give us that uh, for, that same tree canopy cover, which is a little bit lower than that 46% we saw from the one we calculated uh, previously. But it's pretty close. Um, and this is also in the stream. Same basin. So you can imagine it's going to have a pretty similar elevation, pretty similar rainfall. Um, so this is actually a piece of information that we could use. Now, if we came up with 191 here with 2.15, uh, with a little bit of uh, you know tweaking of some of these numbers, you know we could just basically figure out how much we have going to this one. Now, if you remember, we had about 500 and some odd amount of cubic feet per second for one that was only. Uh, let's do a quick calc here. 3.56 divided by 2.14, 1.66. So if we multiply this by 191, this is telling us that we would be around 318. There's actually a, uh, a formula that you can actually use. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here. So this is a formula that you can use. We have our ungaged area. We have our gauged area. We have our gauged flow rate. So we know what that flow rate is. Um, so we know what our gauge flow rate is. It's that 191. We know what our gauged area is. It's that 2.14. We know what that AU value is, which is the ungaged area, was 3.56. So if we just do 3.56 over 2.14, and now I'm going to do this to what is that B value? Now, I calculated this previously at 0.9. Um, so that's going to give us a slightly different number, 1.58. Now, if I multiply that by my 191, I'm going to get th basically 300 CFS. Now, that was quite a bit different than that 500 some odd CFS. Um, so you can see um, this is probably going to be a more accurate number for this specific reach. Um, that we were talking about here, uh, which is quite a bit lower. Um, and in my opinion, using the higher flow rate is probably the safest bet. I mean, if you're building a bridge, you're building a culvert, uh, you'd rather pick a higher flow rate. But you should look at a lot of different information uh, to be able to figure out what is, um, a, you use your best engineering judgment to figure out what is the, the best flow rate to use. Now, let's talk about a couple errors that there might be embedded in this. Now, the main errors that I kind of talked about before, what are the main errors that are associated with this? Well, I already mentioned one before. Uh, this area is really defining what that peak flow rate is. So if you know that there are some ditches that are going to route water to your area and make it a bigger area, or if you know that there are some ditches that may be routing water away from your area, you should go in and update uh, that drainage basin. Um, look for piping as well. Um, and then 
as I kind of mentioned before, it's really only using two pieces of information to calculate that peak flow. Um, so again, while the regression equation can be really powerful, I would definitely check your stream gauges in your area and try to figure out um, how can we more accurately uh, determine what those peak flow rates are. All right, thank you very much. I hope this uh, information has been helpful. Please uh, leave me feedback. Uh, I love any comments. If you like my content, if you don't, and I will talk to you later.